Continuous processing of chemicals has been used in one form or another for centuries. The majority of fine chemicals production today, however, is still in batch. I'm Sam, an R&D scientist at Study Catalyst, and today I'm going to talk to you about why batch is still almost exclusively used, introduce flow chemistry, and elaborate on the problems and opportunities that switching to flow chemistry can create. Flow chemistry is quite an old concept, and in fact it has been around for over 400 years. This picture from a book published in 1556 shows a continuous gold processing plant. Here you can see gold ore is crushed in a mill before being mixed with water and fed into these tubs here. Each tub is partially filled with mercury and stirred, acting like a separating funnel to attract the pure gold into the mercury layer and washing the impurities away. The tubs here act a lot like a series of continuously stirred tank reactors, and you can find more about this type of reactor by watching our CSTR video. Therefore, neither flow nor batch is new. Flow chemists talk about moving away from outdated batch technology, but I think it's very important to appreciate how useful batch actually is. For all synthetic chemists, batch is the bread and butter of what we do. It's what we grew up on. Whether it's making milligrams of a pharmaceutical in a research lab, or scaling up to tons, the general idea is exactly the same. Mix some components together, stir, heat if necessary, and then remove the vessel for purification. It is a tried and tested method and it works. You can do a vast array of things with it without having to learn multiple new techniques to get it to work. But, in a world of tiny profit margins and environmental concerns, it can be quite inefficient. So, can you do better with flow? The easiest way to answer this question is to look at how flow chemistry actually works. In flow, on the face of it, things seem much more complicated. This is because you are constantly feeding new material into the reactor and taking out different material at the other end. But if you can imagine a single point in the reactor, it gives you an effective snapshot of your reaction coordinate. In fact, it quite resembles conventional batch chemistry. In batch, you mix reactants and it takes some time for them to react and obtain products. The error in the equation corresponds to the time it takes for the reaction. In flow, we have the same idea, only the error now corresponds to the space, not time. If everything is set right, the star of your flow reactor corresponds to the left side of your reaction scheme and the exit can be the right side. Of course, different types of flow reactors have their own eccentricities and you can find out about all of the other types and how they work by clicking the links on the screen. One of the great things about flow reactors is being able to better control both mixing rates and also heat and mass transfer. For heat transfer, if you imagine a round bottom flask, the available surface for cooling is basically spherical. Here the volume to surface area is high, so heat transfer is limited. In flow, your reactors are smaller, their volume to surface area is small and you have very good heat transfer. The same is also true for mixing. In smaller volumes, reactants have less of a distance to travel to find one another and initiate a reaction. When you combine these advantages, it is much easier to find control reaction parameters. This means you improve reaction and impurity profiles. As heat transfer is better, it also means that less energy needs to be pumped in or taken away from the system in order to keep the reaction going. This not only improves energy efficiency, but also improves safety, as the potential for thermal runaway or other dangerous occurrences is removed. This in turn aids scale up, as reactor volumes can be kept relatively small compared with batch technology. The breadth of design of flow reactors is quite large, with many different systems available, such as CSTRs, as well as plate-based microreactors or trickle bed reactors. Such diversity has both advantages and disadvantages when you compare against batch. On the one hand, specialized flow reactors are often more efficient than batch. Product quality can be improved and production simplified. However, each step often requires a different reactor, which represents a cost and scale-up challenge. On the other hand, batch technology is simple and multifunctional. Process development work from lab to production scale happens in the same batch reactor concept that accelerates development and cuts costs. There isn't a one-size-fits-all flow solution to synthetic problems. Batch technology is still the most economical way to run many chemical processes. It's simple, well-known, and multifunctional. Flow chemistry does, however, bring enormous benefits to many chemical transformations. Flow can be greener and more sustainable than batch. Flow can give you better control of your processes. It could save you both time and money in running those processes. Most flow reactors have a limited application range, though. At Stolle, we develop novel flow reactors that combine simplicity, scalability, and multifunctionality. And we help businesses figure out how to adapt their existing processes to flow. Get in touch with us, links on the screen, and we can see how we can help you.